trying. Hey, well, I'll poke holes in the box. All right, okay. folks, welcome to the Legend of the Travel. The Legend of the <laughs> Never mind. This has been this kind of day on these audio recording here. But welcome to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis Radio Show. My name is Christian Basil. You know what? Let's start that over. My name is Katie Manning. How are you doing there, folks? Thank you for joining us here at the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. Um, I'm going to quickly just go over the people that are on the screen. Uh, I, for those of you who are trying to join us on the live chat and the live stream, thank you so much for having to do something a little bit in a different sense. Uh, but let me introduce the team. We still have our current guests right now. First of all, let me introduce our good friend, Dr. Freedom himself, Brian Burress. How are you doing there, Brian? Hanging in there somehow. Great. Great. <laughs> and I have the lovely director and co-host of The Legend of the Traveling Tartars, Artiste Melanie Dean. How are you doing there, Melanie? I'm here. This is fine. We're good. Now Tim, I want curry. <laughs> there you go. Tim, please tell me that's an alcoholic beverage you just drank because I'm going to need some right away there. And <laughs> I'm hoping everybody can hear us now. And I'm th thank you uh, with all these technical difficulties and everything. Uh, I appreciate it. Now, I want to introduce, uh, on, for those of you who are looking at us on live feed or on the YouTube channel, on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, uh, we did promise we were going to have Katie Manning, who's going to be our special panelist co-host today. How are you doing there, Katie, <laughs> on the FaceTime? I, I, I'm on a caffeine drip, and I just... <laughs> Oh, man, I'm doing really well. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening is we have had so many technical difficulties, which is just usually we don't, and we feel so bad for it. So Tim has graciously called Katie on her phone and is yeah. FaceTiming live from his screen. So you get to have four little panels, and Tim and Katie are sharing the same little area. So... Oh. <laughs> If you don't know, the gentleman to the left of Katie, if you're looking out yeah. on the screen, yeah. watching in the FaceTime, who's kind enough to put her on FaceTime on his phone, this is Mr. Tim Trailer. Uh, for those of you who are on the Big Finish, you know him as the third doctor. Uh, and Katie is going to do her best to kind of interview Mr. Trailer. This is going to be very exciting. <laughs> <over here. laughs> and we're going to try our best uh, for the audio recording for those of you listening on the uh on, on YouTube and all that. Well, what's, what's that, Katie? I'm sorry. I'm just saying what's happening on my screen right now is it's like I've just flipped back to the 70s. It's all gone very, very kind of weird. I've got fun, <laughs> I've got chairs. I, I'm really confused, but I'll do my best. Can I have some more of your having? <laughs> Where are you, Tim? Where am I? I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing you at the screen at the moment. <laughs> you as well, honestly. But I, I like just seeing you. Look, I like this. I like this. You're the devil on my shoulder. Look. Can you see? The devil on my shoulder. Look, look at that. Stop it. I'm not going to do those terrible things you're telling me to do. Stop it. I'm not going to do that. No, well, I can't do that. <gasps> Sorry. And for those of you who are listening on the audio, I don't know why, this is probably the funniest thing you'll ever see today on YouTube. So definitely want to catch this on YouTube. Uh, I, yeah. And uh, we want, just, to, just to make you aware, we are still doing live chat. So if you want to ask Tim anything, if you want to ask Katie anything, if you want to ask the Traveling Tardis team anything, please go ahead to the live chats and do this right now. J.R. Hubbard, our man who plays the fourth doctor here out there. It says, good afternoon again, TARDIS fam. Take two, LOL, love you all. Thank you so much, JR, for joining us down there. And again, for those of you who are just joining us, thank you for uh, sitting back and going through all the technical difficulties. Definitely thank Tim and Katie for joining us down there. You're taking Katie away now. <laughs> He's got to favor her for the drink. <laughs> I don't drink, but I'm thinking of taking it up. <laughs> And uh, don't want to hold a man between him and his curry. So, Tim, for those of the uh, those of us, uh, those are friends out there in the, in the universe who have not heard of Big Finish or are not familiar with the Third Doctor. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and 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 Big Finish and how everything started with this. Well, basically, <clears throat> what happened was um, I went to drama school with John Dorney, who writes and acts for Big Finish. And uh, Katie, you know him, don't you? Oh, I've done a lot of his audios. He's done a lot of his audios. And uh, we, we went at the party, and I, I, I told him I'd won this, this BBC award, an audio award. And he said, oh, you've got to come and work for Big Finish. 
uh, when he can. And the first one I ever did was called Destination Nerva, um, where oh. I played this uh, a zombie Victorian lord, sort of imperialist, sort of very posh chap, you know. And um, Tom Baker was the doctor who I was doing it with. And uh-huh. he was in the studio and he said to Nick Briggs, who was directing, I, he said, said, he sounds like, I can't do the accent. I, you need John Coulshaw to come and do Tom Baker. But um, <laughs> yeah. he said, he sounds like John. And it went from there, really. So they decided that, I mean, it's obviously a, a very, uh, it was a very um, brave decision and, a, and, and one that they thought quite a lot about, about re- recasting the third Doctor. Um, and they felt that, Maybe it was time to do it. And obviously, with Katie's blessing, there she is. I, I did get the phone call to ask how I felt about it. And this, the, the fascinating thing was that for me, I said, yes, of course. But it was so important to me on the first time we did it that we had that rapport because that was the vital thing. Yes. And that we weren't just to be doing an imitation and an impersonation of John, which you are such a one actor that you don't do that. You absolutely, I've watched you grow and grow and are completely under the skin. And, you know, I, it, it's such a wonderful thing to stand there. But the most important thing is the rapport that we had that is mm-hmm. what really kind of clicks it, makes it work. Yeah, we do have a great rapport, don't we? I will give you the money later for all the th- nice things you've just said, by the way. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Actually, Tim, I, this is true, because when I first met Katie and I spoke to her and I told her, I said uh, about this, and I think I'm going to pose this question to Katie. When when you first heard him do the voiceover as as John, what did you think? But I know when she, when, when she answered to me, she goes, and, and I'm I'm going to do my best, Katie, darling. If he didn't do it, I wasn't going to do it at all, or something like that. So Sorry. it's it's hey, Katie, are you there? I thought you were the what? what? <laughs> Listen, I'm not sure I'm here. Please keep reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> my own pulse for a second. Um, but, but it's it's wonderful because Tim is such an incredible actor that I've watched him and because he uses all the body language and all the rest of it, little tiny things that we'll say to each other and then I look at him and I'll say, just imagine you, you, you're you just tickling Joe under the chin or you've got your hand on your hip or something like that. And I, it's it, there are times when I honestly, honestly forget and I get these... I go right back into that feeling and to, to being with John. And that's a lot to do with how well you get on with the actor as well. That's such an important aspect of it. And, you know, Tim, as I say, it's just grown and grown and grown. And I think one of the best ones we've done, which was, excuse me, that was my head you got there, um, The Legacy of Time, which was absolutely beautiful. And there were moments in that I just got goosebumps from Tim. He's just so good. And I'll just quickly tell you this, and then I want to find out some more about Tim as an actor, which I think would be really interesting. Um, I got locked in the in the loo. <laughs> what? <laughs> Go on. And I got locked in the loo, and I knew they were all having lunch, you see. So uh-huh. I didn't want to disturb them while they were having lunch, because just because I was locked in the loo didn't mean that they couldn't finish their sandwiches, you know. So I was in the loo for quite some considerable length of time before they even realised I wasn't there. Um, and anyway, eventually I kind of got the phone call and made the phone call, and Tim came and broke me out of the toilet. And it was at that moment I looked at him and I said, you are my doctor. <laughs> and yeah. that was quickly followed. Can I just tell you the, the next uh, toilet episode? That that was quickly followed by the next recording in another studio when Katie walked into the toilet and there was a mirror at the back of the toilet. And she just walked in and she went, oh, sorry, I didn't realise anyone was in here. <laughs> <laughs> I walked out. Now, yes. Tell now. I'd like to know at what point in your life did you 
decide that you wanted to become an actor? Was there any background from your family or was this something completely randomly that you knew you had to do? Well, it certainly wasn't um, background. Uh, my parents were teachers. Um, I started doing, for some reason, I don't remember why, amateur dramatics when I was 14 at the local village hall, you know, doing the sort of old 1950s. Oh, in Wales, no, this was in Kent. I moved to Kent from Wales when I was 14. Right. And about a year later, I joined this amateur dramatic group. I have no idea. I think we were chasing girls or something that were involved in it or some, something like that. As you, you know, the usual that's thing. why you join amateur dramatic. Well, that's why, you, that's why you become an actor, isn't it? <laughs> girls are not having the work for them. Surely. So, um, <laughs> so, um, basically, I feel like, um, <laughs> and apparently this, like, this might be inappropriate for an international board, I think. I don't know. No, no, no. no. Uh, first, of uh, all, first of all, I never thought I'd live to see the day that one of our, our, our episodes would ever literally go into the toilet. But here we are right now. <laughs> go for it, just, Tim. I want to hear this. So basically, I was doing um, amateur dramatics, and then I got a normal job. I became a civil servant, and uh -huh. I, I worked in the law courts at the famous Old Bailey in London, which is the big... Um, you know, the one with all the big serious cases. And um, I was doing amateur dramatics at the site at the time. And um, the girl I was going out with at the time was a student. And I just thought this student lifestyle style is fantastic, isn't it? And at the time I was getting some really good reviews from the local press for acting and stuff. And so I I decided, well, what the hell? And I just chucked everything in and I, I sold everything and tried to raise the money. And it was very expensive to go to the uh, these dra these dramas because are very expensive to go to. The fees are astronomical, and I didn't get I got any money behind me, so I just sold my car and my flat and and went off. And just I was a bit older, and maybe that helped. Um, and just I stroked the luck. Determination, you know, the, the the difference between somebody who stays in as an amateur actor and stays into the profession is that total commitment that you took you sold your car you took that risk yeah so that showed you had the, the passion and the desire and the determination to follow that and what a fool what absolute fool well, katie I you otherwise, <laughs> but however now i'm working with you yeah you are absolutely you are a wonderful actor oh thank you Dolly. to watch you work is an absolute joy and a pleasure oh, bless you Weirdest thing, of course i was always the youngest when playing Joe Brown. I stand in that studio now, and I'm mm. the oldest playing the youngest, which is a little spooky. Yeah. But also, just recently, you've done something very exciting, which I'd like you to um, tell us about, because I've seen it. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. You do? Oh, I do. You've seen it. Really. Um, yeah, I um, <clears throat> last year I worked um, very closely on um, the film Doolittle. Um, I was I uh, taught Robert Downey Jr. to speak in a Welsh accent. I'm from Wales originally. Oh, you serious? Oh, uh, wow. So, uh, yeah. um, yes. Oh, Say again. What's that lovely Welsh thing you said? Oh, you know, how's Jackie? Oh, not good. She's been under the doctor. She's been under the doctor, isn't it? That's right, isn't it? Oh, tired I am. Um, so, yeah, so I was over. I was over I was, yeah, I went and um, I, uh, yeah, so I was a lovely man, absolutely wonderful man. He is. He's just such a. Oh, it makes me emotional uh, talking about him, really, because he's such a lovely chap. Robert is. So uh, yeah. So I spent a lot of time with him last year. When doing he that. Went through difficult times. You knew what a lovely man he was because every single actor came out in support of mm, him. Yeah. But I went to see the film Doctor Doolittle. Did you? What do you think of the accent? I was, I was all by myself. Yeah. Buddy with me. I was going to, and it was so uncanny because. He did it wonderfully, but I could I could hear you all the way through. Could you? In my ears, all I could hear was Ted, right? Ah. I could hear, and just your delivery. Um, all right, and yeah. Obviously, pick that up. Well, I played and the whale in it as well. I was the whale. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, and that was him. He got me that. He said, "Oh no, we've got to have you in it." So yeah, I was very oh. lucky. It was a very wonderful, wonderful, wonderful period. It really was. And you do a lot of theatre as well, don't you? Yeah, I do a lot of theatre with the Royal Shakespeare Company, and I've been on Broadway a couple of times. And um, Broadway, I did uh, the Scottish. Am I allowed to say the Scottish play's name? We all know what it is. We're not allowed to say it, are we? Oh. The Roost Paul. <laughs> Mackers, the Scottish King. 
So I did that with Patrick Stewart on Broadway and in the West End. Uh, that was a fantastic experience as well. I was living in New York for four months. And that's my favorite city in the world, I've got to say. So, um, yeah, and I've worked. Yes, yeah, your second. What's your first? London, is it? Oh, see, I've moved out of London now. I lived in New York. And, yeah. You know, I, I, but it's, I, I absolutely love it. But there's something about London which just picks it for me. Is it? What, the overpriced ice creams? Or? Um, no, I have a Freedom Pass, which. Ah! <laughs> it does help. No, wait a minute. What's a Freedom Pass? Just for people who are not familiar with that. Darling, it means that we've earned the right to travel absolutely free. Oh, okay, okay, cool. You probably have that in the states, don't you? some sort of. Um, I don't know. We have okay. senior discounts, and that's it. They no one, no one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free here. We have the early bird specials no. and such like that. Hang on, Katie. Uh, hang on, folks, because let me get just go to the live chats. There are a few of them that pop up over here. Cindy Guerrera. Hello, Cindy. She says, "Broke her out of the toilet. Greatest story ever." <laughs> <laughs> We have uh, Gina Barres, who just, was just laughing at them. Lady Gallifrey herself. David, welcome. He says, ha. And uh, David Cervantes, who says, ha. Brian Hurley, uh, Hurley, her, her, I apologize if I'm butchering it, but Brian there, he says, hi, just seen this new, and I'm a, and I'm a friend of, I'm assuming he's saying, a friend of Steve K. And uh, Cindy comes back and says, love Doolittle. Um Gosh, there. How, when did you first meet? Um, when did you first meet Tim? Let me uh, let me ask Katie that. And, and um, if you can do me a favor, um, Tim, just have her a little bit closer to the microphone there, so we can hear. But you know, what, what was your first impression of Tim when you met him? With the mic. You know, within three seconds, I mean, I, Tim will tell you, I'm a very tactile, um, you know, I hug random strangers, you know, I'm that woman. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and you know, I, and I was a little nervous because I so wanted this to work. Um, because I didn't want to do Joe Grant for a long time. It took them ages to get me to do because I said, Why would I do it without John? And then I played John for so many years, I kind yeah. of got to do it. Um, but it was, I was a little bit nervous, and I was, little, but I, I, the, within seconds, I just knew how happy I was, how. Instantly, I felt so comfortable with him, and we both have, which we're being very well behaved, actually, mm. for all of you. We are being, because we are much naughtier than this. In fact, we are quite outrageous together, and uh, John and I were, too. Um, and this is sort of the moment that I felt that, and then the moment that I stood in the studio, and I, I could see what an extraordinary actor he was. And as I say, he wasn't just there doing cleverly doing John Pertwee's voice. He was finding all the arteries that led to the heart of John's performance of the Doctor. Right. All of those things. So it was minutes. It was minutes, uh, seconds. You know, it was instantaneous, in fact, that uh, I felt so comfortable with him and I adore every second of working with him. I don't like him a lot, but, you know... <laughs> <laughs> but now he's got the voice there too speaking of instantaneous hang on one second because we got to hit a commercial break when we return we're going to continue our conversation with a third doctor actor and uh actor and specialty actor himself trim uh tim trelor with special guest panelist katie manning we'll return to the uh, legend of the traveling tardis please stay logged on to dan and continue to become part of the legend and Tim, if you can do me one small favor, whenever she's talking, just have her closer to the microphone because we hear very crystal clear when she's talking. Where's the microphone? Or wherever. When you put her up towards the screen, where's the microphone? Whenever you're putting up towards the screen, we can hear her very clearly. It's well, awesome. Talk, Katie. Talk, Katie. Katie? Does it, yeah, I'm talking. How's that? If I project a bit more, is that better? No, you're fine. As long as he's got you up against the screen like that, we can hear him great. Okay. We can hear I you great. Because sometimes, obviously, the light... Yeah, um, takes it, and I'm trying to just angle it so you, the audience we, can see it. That's actually perfect, right there. Yeah, well, I'm gonna Ver do verbally and thing. Yeah, perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Gotcha. Okay, and back in whenever you're ready, Melanie. Okay. <laughs> Don't you know, you're doing that. <laughs> Shit! I thought I was doing that behind your back. So I... <laughs> <laughs> You're a grass. 
<laughs> Melody, back in when you're ready. Okay, ready? And five, four, three. Welcome back to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis Radio Show. Hello, chaps. I'm Katie Manning. You remember me from Dr. How are you doing there, folks? My name is Christian Basil. I am the host of the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. Uh, if you're watching me on the YouTube or on the uh, StreamYard, thank you so much for your patience while we were trying to work through some technical difficulties. To the left of me over here is Dr. Freem himself, Brian Bress. Below me is definitely not below me. She is the most wonderful person you'll ever meet, Melanie Dean, co-host and director of the travel. Well, just physically on the screen there. I mean, down, down. You know what I mean. Go away. <laughs> and with us, our special guest, Tim Trelore, uh plays third doctor on the Big Finish, and special guest panelist, Katie Manning there. Katie, what else did you want to bring up from Tim? Something that we should know in public. <laughs> I'm being really a nice Katie today. There's a lot of things I could bring up about Tim. Um, you have less than an hour. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to say it right at the end, just before everything goes black. Um, <laughs> we all, we're all off. Um, no, Tim is honestly, he's one of these extraordinary people that he just is, is a joy to be with. He just, he just fits in with everything and he's funny. He's a, but what my favorite moment is, which is very, very naughty, is just <laughs> a, a John moment. And he's well. Every now and again, it slips, doesn't it, lovely? It does, doesn't it? So, and, um, so what I do, yeah, is, is and, and he says, "Was that all right?" That's, you know, and I said, "You absolutely. That was lovely. That was really grand. That was great. That was. That, you know, I'll give you a big clutch later for that because it was fabulous." And of course, then that takes you, and he says, "Don't do that. Don't <laughs> do that." Because, but it is, it's a wonderful thing to watch him working. He'll listen to a little bit of John and then bang, he's straight back into it. And I, I noticed too, Tim, that the, the more the script goes on, the less you actually, you, you really kind of get so into the flow of John. It's it's quite extraordinary watching you. It really is. Oh, thank you. It's, it's just great. It's great fun. I mean, the scripts are always great. And, you know, I, and I've got to say, I know, that, you know, just to be part of the love in here, honestly, without Katie, I've got to say, I wouldn't be able to do this um, in the way that I do because she is always there she is always there she's always giving advice she's always nurturing and and supportive and you know it's it's you couldn't want someone you you, you couldn't want anyone better than katie on but that's what we do isn't yeah it? I mean, you know, well some people don't do that some people don't do that you go you go above and beyond and you do it for the fans as well and you know ev the fans know you know the way you you are with them and i think it's really important that it's acknowledged and you know how much you know you mean to the fans um well, because without them let's be honest those fans are extraordinary people as you now you know when you were actually a convention virgin and when you did your first convention you know and you saw these absolutely wonderful lovely people who all have their stories to tell and the fans we have to look you know we're not just talking with people we see at conventions we're looking at russell t davis we're looking at you know mark Bolsies. those are fans yeah you know they it's it's a program that has inspired yeah. so many yeah. people but you do you do you do give a lot of your Katie to these, you know, these people and to and to us in the studio. And I think I think, you know, you need to know that because you are wonderful, you know. And, you know, let's be honest, without them, we don't have a show. No, you know, they are, they are to be loved and respected and nurtured. Yeah, and I saw how you were in a, at an American convention and in a in an English convention we did and I saw how you immediately they you know you fell straight into actually loving those people yeah. and and wanting to thank them yeah for being so caring and supportive yeah. um, and that's part of our job you know and uh, you know that, that that's really really important but mm. I also think that working together when John and I worked, we did everything together because that's how you get that relationship. That's because that relationship 
that you have between the doctor and the companion. You know, it's really, really important. Put that bottle down. Um, it's really Stop walking me up. Let me know. <laughs> you missed me with my nobody, bottle. Nobody on the show can literally hold their liquor today. So I'm mean, this is really Speaking of doing our job, let me just run through the chat, the, the live chats real fast. Uh, Yildiz says, that's putting it mildly, hugging uh, to an earlier chat there. Maria says, hi, all. And uh, Graham Kors, Kraus, who says, Tim and Katie, what a great double act. Lady Gallifrey herself, Linda, uh, Gina Barres says, I love this. This is hilarious. <laughs> that is true. That is, this is. This is one of the most wonderful episodes I've ever done there. Yildiz uh, Pagan says, I met Katie a few times along with my son in Minnesota and London. While we saw her in London, it was at the 50th anniversary convention. She got in trouble with handlers because she climbed up on a table behind us to hug us, kiss my son, who was 11 at the time and graduating from high school. Uh, who was 11 at the time, uh, and graduating from high school tomorrow, and pose for a selfie. It was quite fun. Love her so much. So uh, you made some big impressions, speaking of conventions out there. I have no shame. There's pictures of me crawling all over the floor. Um, I can't remember <laughs> the last convention. Do you remember? Yes, I, I do. I do remember. <laughs> About to say, I can testify to that because my wife and I got a picture with Katie and Richard Franklin at Chicago Tardis last year. Yep, I can agree to that. Again, I've been with you when you've fallen off the table. <laughs> no, 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 Tim, 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 even better because she just put it on her Twitter just recently. She had Simon Fisher Becker's electric wheelchair, and it is on her Twitter site if you want to catch it. Um, my goodness, I, I I literally screamed as she made impact. Well, she was doing a kindness of putting the, the wheelie chair away for him, but it just spun out of control and she took when out I some sweatshirts. <laughs> so I remember Katie telling us the last time she was on the program about this and then seeing the video, it was like, oh my God, she wasn't kidding around. That poor wreck. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, you can part my my. Everybody knows I can't see in front of my nose. And, you know, and he said, Who, who's going to park my um, mobility scooter? And nobody said, and he said, oh, darling, I will. Because, you know, I'm one of those people, like, oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. I was like that all through school. Oh, I'll do it. Um, and <laughs> so it was so, oh, okay, I couldn't even find the hole to put the key in. And yet they still let me do it. And I couldn't run around, and then I, I kind of don't know what happened, but it just veered left, and I took out a whole clothing rail and ended up in underneath a pile of sweatshirts. <laughs> you know, um, true right. story. It's an absolutely true story. There are so many. I got a quick question for Tim. Now, many, many moons ago, you appeared on my show. Yes, I did. I remember Brian. And you told me a little something, and I wanted to ask if you know if you still do this. You you, you told us that. Um, whenever you felt that you were starting to lose the pace a little, you had a cassette recorder with apparently um, some, you know, some of John's vocal parts on it to help you get back in sync. Do you still need the cassette recorder? Or do you feel yeah. you've gone beyond that? Uh, no, no, no. Every time, um, his voice is so specific and unique. And like Katie said, it's, it's not a matter of you, you can't do an impression because if you do an impression, you will lose some of the acting. So it's it's. It's the sort of the essence of, of him that is important as an actor to try and convey. And that includes like what, what Katie was saying about um, physical mannerisms, like the, the chin and the hands on the, the hips. But also, if you're recording for hours on end and, you, and you're stopping and you're chatting as yourself, you need just to go back into the character. So on my iPhone, I've got clips of a couple of episodes of, um, of John speaking. Uh, I think it's, um, which one is it? I can't remember. Uh, the Mutants? Remember. The Mutants? Yes. Which was shot in Chiseler's Caves. There you go. Well, they are. I went there fairly recently, it's actually. And, Tim, and that's what you do so well. You know, it, it, when I, I, I mean, I'm only going to say when I play John himself, I wasn't doing John, but I was finding John's essence. That essence. Yeah. And mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. There are people out there who do incredible impersonations. Yeah. But it, 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 that's a very one level thing and you know as a voiceover actor and this is what's so wonderful you know you cannot do any character without the physicality mm. because you know you can't even do a dialect unless mm. you 
your body language. That's right. That's true. That's absolutely true. And you've helped with that because every time I'm in the studio, in between in, in breaks, you would say, oh, another thing John did was this. Or I'll tell you a little story that he did. And that all helps. It's all information as an actor to play a character. So it's the same as playing a real life character in a film or in a play. You're able to just, just pick, you know, find as much about this person. So I'm finding much as much about John and his doctor as possible in order to play him as opposed to doing an impression because I I'm not an impressionist. So exactly and that's yeah. why because you're such an extraordinary actor that you do this so beautifully. And I think that was one of my I know I have such confidence in Big Finish, in Nick, in in, in David Richardson and so on. However, I did have that fear that you were just going to come in and do a very good John Pertwee voice. Sure. And that was the one thing that I absolutely, that was my only real fear when they said, how would you feel? Yeah. Um, and I had great trust and confidence as we do in Big Finish because they are quite extraordinary in everything mm. that they do. Yeah. Um, but within seconds, I could see that wasn't how you were going to approach it. No. You know, and, yeah. that made, and you can hear it. You, you can actually hear that that essence of John and, mm -hmm. and you know those little kind of things that you do that we talk about uh, they add that extra level and oh. also the relationship they adds to the relationship yeah. well the relationship is so important isn't it between Joe Grant and and, and the third doctor is it's just crucial that's yeah. it's it's pivotal we were very close yes and yeah that was one of the things yeah but this is t a testament to your ability as an actor, then, as well, that you you embrace that uh, that partnership, um, and you embrace another. You know, because a lot of actors. I'm not saying you know, not di disparaging other actors, but you know, a lot of actors act themselves and oh, yeah. for their own performance, yeah. and that there's you know that's that's right or wrong, whatever. But uh, my type of actor is someone who works with someone else. You know, well, you're the kind of actor that. Uh, and, that, and you know there are some people that don't do this, that when you're doing television and you are doing something, they are not going to be there, you know, behind the camera for you. Sure. And sure. they'll just walk away because they've done their bit. Yeah. L luckily, Whereas with theatre... and I would always be there yeah. for each other and the same way as I'm not going to leave the studio if mm -hmm. I'm going to do a long scene with them, I'm still going to be there. Sure. Yeah, I mean, luckily, luckily, most theatre actors are like that, aren't they? I mean, my experience in theatre is people are like that. That's just the culture. Yes. Um, Speaking yeah, of the culture, I don't mean to cut you off shortly. We have to hit a hard break. But when we return, we're going to be back with Tim Trelawney, who plays the third doctor in the Big Finish, uh, <clears throat> in the Big Finish audios, with the lovely Katie Manning on the FaceTime. Uh, you, if you're not watching this, you are missing so much. When we return, please stay logged on, tuned in, and continue to become part of the legend. And we're going to get to your chats as well. All I can say to you, Tim, is Papa Dom's. Oh, poppadoms. Oh, gosh, yeah. I'll tell you what, they're going to be there. We've got... Hey, hang on to that thought. <laughs> let, let Melanie do the countdown, and you can say whatever you want. <laughs> oh, we got chicken tikka masala, coconut rice, sagaloo, and probably tapadal. I think it's tapadal. So, yeah, we've delayed it a little bit, so it's all right. Um, yeah, so no, no, it's absolutely fine. Don't worry yeah, no, I can't wait. I haven't had a for ages. I can't wait. Because it's been close, hasn't it? Actually, do you know, I haven't been eating meals. What? I don't even know. What do you mean eating? She's just stopped eating. She's like, I'm done. I'm wasting away to nothing, darling. She's yeah. grazing in the grass outside. I've seen her. I've seen, I watch her on Twitter. Yeah, it's really quite easy for me. Okay, Christian, ready? Yes. Oh, no. You'll have to do a countdown. Ready? And three, two. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the best. That's the best way to introduce this segment. Welcome back to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis. My name is Christian Mazel, Doctor Freedom, Melanie Dean. Uh, we have special guest Trim, uh, Tim Tim Tra Trailer, Third Doctor. <laughs> I like Tim. I like Trim. 
call me Trim. They call me Trim Trelaw. I like that. Trim 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 all right, speaking of something I, more, let's get back to the chats real fast there since we're live on it. Uh, we got Matthew Rose who says, hi, Tim and Katie. He also adds, uh, been a long while. Tim really enjoyed the Third Doctor box set and lo lots of love to Katie there as well. Uh, also, Matthew. Cheers, Matthew. We also have Sue Cook who says, yes, I so agree. Katie literally brings love to so many every day. You may be absolutely in the dumps and she cares. She lifts you. Her love stretches across continents. Hugs to you all. Yes, Katie, this is a wow. testament to a human being that you are that reminds us. And I, that's why I follow you on Twitter because when I'm down to the dumps, I look at your tweet and it just lifts me back up. So thank yeah. you so much, Katie. Even if it's silly, even if it's just being naughty, I love watching your tweets because it really brings me out of the yeah. dumps. So that's Not a testament. Positive. You do give positivity out so much. It's incredible. No, I just like like my granddaughter has got a little uh, figurine that she just calls grandma and um, it was reduced to sitting in a toilet roll the other day and then she decided that grandma's dress was too short so she's wrapped me in toilet roll um, <laughs> <laughs> I wrapped my face <laughs> oh, there you go she, she had this she was with it and, and my daughter said you know who have you got this she said oh grandma and she said, well, what's grandma doing? She said, she's taking her pet out. And so Georgie said, well, what's her pet? She said, it's a chicken. It's <laughs> <laughs> so surreal and, and funny. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember any of the tweets, but I mean, if you just if, please follow Katie on Twitter because you'll just be simply amused because Katie will just tweet out something that goes, this bug has wings. I didn't know this bug has wings. Nobody no, told of, me this bug has wings. You know, just something of that nature there. I so, hate to admit it, but one of my guilty pleasures is when, you know, I, I, if I feel bad for admitting it on the air, but when she takes the wrong train. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, no. I feel kind of bad, but I have to laugh at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Tim. Yes. Yes. Tim, Tim, Tim. yes Hi. Next thing I want to ask you, um, out of interest, you know, I mean, obviously you've done lots of, you've done a lot of voice and you've been very successful as the third doctor. And I do think that one of my favorites of, that we did is um, the time. Oh yeah. I think that was a beautiful piece of writing and it was a wonderful piece for you and I, you know, it was quite an emotional piece. And, I, and it was quite extraordinary to work with. But, you know, given it's one of those things you probably get asked a lot as an actor, but it always interests me. Um, what sort of genre are you most comfortable in when it comes to, you know, if I was to say to you, I will let you play any character you like, is there something that you really aspire to play apart from John Perfect, of course? <laughs> <clears throat> I'd like to have a crack at the Scottish King. I, I understudied it. I, I wish we could say just say it, the Mac, whatever. Um, I did. I did play it actually. I, I when Pat, I when Patrick Stewart did it. Um, I understudied him. I was playing Ross, which isn't a tiny part. It's quite a big part. And but I understudied him as well. And I went on a few times. And that's the part I really want to do. Um, usually something with something. I, I always wanted to be in war films. That's what I want. Some people, some boys wanted to be in cowboy films, but I wanted to be in war films. I think I probably, I'd have to be a general now, wouldn't I, or something? I wouldn't be able to actually be a commander anymore. You could actually play one of those wonderful characters that sort of stayed as a sergeant for many years. That could be, yeah. And he gets angry and bitter, and then suddenly, you know, what, what happens, I don't know. But what I'm doing at the minute, actually, funny enough, you're talking about that, I'm playing a character at the moment called Peter Peter. Um, and I'm I'm putting that out actually in a, a few hmm. uh, time. He's it's a comedy character called Peter Peter, and he's got a positivity program, and he's a positivity guru, and he's a Welsh boy, and he's talking like that, right? And he's a very he's the last person who you should who should be a positivity guru because he's really not ready to be a positivity guru. Oh, but that. so that's coming out in a few weeks' time. So that's if you see. It's going to be online somewhere. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm yet, but that's that's sort of my passion at the moment. I wish I, I've written it. Oh, no. I will do. Everybody out there to see as much of your work as possible mm -hmm. because I really do rate you as Oh, bless you. What, oh, what's it? Oh, thank you so much. What's it going to be called, or do you have a working title? It's at the moment. It's Peter Peter's Positivity Program. There's a te it's a ten part, four minute series of him basically uh, teaching positivity to people under the circumstances that we we we're facing um, at the moment. But it's a comedy, so it's mm -hmm. it, it, you'd expect he's not really. Um, he shouldn't really be teaching positivity. Um, and he has a long-running battle with a 96-year-old neighbour, a woman called oh, no. Emily Starbury, who he, he hates. Uh, <laughs> and he also spies on a woman over the road called Carol Annette Darnay. And he's got her, um, her package from Amazon that uh, has been given to him. So, uh, but, uh, yeah. Okay. So you we'll keep see, an eye yeah. out. We'll start to sort of like put little teasers out soon. Okay. Uh, no, what? I'm about to play a transvestite called Who runs a very seedy bar. Um, so oh, really? You're playing a costume. <laughs> Wait, was this online or is this on? Uh... Yeah, I was just thinking because we're doing things online oh, brilliant. right now. And, it's uh, with this. Is this a, a man who's uh, identifies as a woman, or no, no, no? This is somebody who, well, transvestite. You can either decide whether or not this is okay. operating, you know, or whether. I mean, I'm not going to do it for you now, but it's. <laughs> oh, can't wait to bloody see that. Well, I can't wait to see Peter. Oh, Peter. right. Well, I'll keep you informed about that. I love that whole concept. And it's just you, is it? It's just me. I've got a, a guy directing me, and I've got a guy doing the sort of technical bits. But um, yeah, I've written them. Yeah, but you're not videoed because I have to video myself. Oh, I have to do that. I have to do yeah. that. Yeah, it's uh, it, that's a trial. So he looks a bit like this. I'll just just show you. Look at this. Look at this bit of false plug in here. He's terrible. <laughs> he's, he's got the John Goodman glasses on. You know, oh my like, god! <laughs> Three, and he's it does. Like that, right? They're listening, guys, because you know. I tell you what, right? I am my own man. For instance, I am indifferent to Marmite. <laughs> right? And look, like cows fed on ecstasy, the stakes are high. So he's he's a comedy <laughs> guru. Oh, so, yeah. It might be British humour, I don't know. But... <laughs> but uh, oh, my God. You basically look like Walter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Walter from The Big Lebowski because when he said John Goodman oh glasses, my God, on, yeah. I'm like, oh, oh my he's God. He's inspired by positivity. Walter. Yeah, but he's a positivity guru and he's Welsh, right? And But the other thing is he's inspired also by, I don't know if you watch Louis Theroux, you know the Louis Theroux programs? There was one where he did it and he went to um, the people who, who get wives from um, uh, Thailand. And it was the, the, the one of the guys there who's obviously he's at PTSD. He's probably ex services and he's the anger in him, but he's I love you. I am going to protect you. And then he's and then the guy who he's who is helping him, he's just listen, I hate you. Have you seen it? Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he's based on that sort of, you know. Yeah. Have you ever thought of writing, Tim? Well, I've written all these. You wrote these. Yeah. The Peter Peter I wrote, yeah. Oh, that's Yeah, so this is ten parts. Is this wow. the first Time that you have taken on writing something like this? No, I've written a sitcom actually, which I'm trying to get out to people. Set in the near future, not the the uh, the, the space age future. It's it's set in a, in 20 years time where um, uh, we've got poorer, uh, Britain's got poorer and hotter, and basically the internet's been smashed uh, by cl climate change activists, and um, it's about three bungling agents who are trying to save the individuals and, and, and people of that time. This guy, this mad guy who lives in the Tower of London. This all sounds really bad. I haven't got thought of my pitch yet. That's, so it's, it's a and bit... I'm listening to the pitch. Yeah, it's, I, I should have thought of the pitch. Tonight. But, um, yeah, so that's... I'm going to try and float that well, out somewhere. One thing, I mean, you know I adore you. I adore you. Know, you. I've said all these lovely things about you. You have. You know how I really feel. Yeah, I know um, that. You know, 
I, I just like a tiny little role as a completely unrecognisable character in it. Every time. You know, that's all I ask. Yeah, you I don't it. ever want to be a lead again. I only ever want to sort of carry the crumpets on in the third act, unrecognised. We all, we all want to carry the crumpet on. <laughs> 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 and on that note, folks, we're going to go to a commercial break. <laughs> when, when we return, these two will get a room by themselves, and we'll return, continue, and finish up our wrap up our interview with Tim Trailer with special guest panelist Katie Manning. When we return, please stay logged on, tune in, you two behave, <laughs> come back, and continue to become part of the legend. Oh my God, we be really well behaved. I swear to God. Better behave than yeah. we ever be. Yeah. Together. That's why I don't want you to be right now. <laughs> the American audience. Yeah. Yeah. We thought a little about what we said and what we haven't thought. Yeah. And we haven't said anything very, very, very naughty. No. No. no, not yet. Not yet. We have one more <laughs> segment, though. <laughs> and this is the final stretch to, yeah. Right. Ready? And five, four, okay. Three. We get you in there. Hi, this is Christian Williams with the Legend of the Traveling Tardis Radio Show. That's Dr. Freedom. That's Melanie Dean. That's Trim Trelor, and that's Katie Manning. There we go. That's <laughs> going to be the shortest segment ever. <laughs> and I uh, just want to quickly run through the chats there, Katie, before you got the next question there. And I have something to say as well there. Matthew Rose uh, continues. I got to say, I got to say, not spoiling the latest box set, but the opening of the Dalek episode had me in stitches. John Coleshaw in Stunning as the Brigadier. It was just a woe to hear him bring him to life there. He also continues, Katie, get a cup of tea. <laughs> Maria says, she is such a ray of sunshine. Yes, she definitely is. Lady Gallifrey, I follow her on Twitter and check her tweets out every day. So do I there, Lady Gallifrey. So do I. Matthew continues, oh, to plug it again for those who have seen Katie what? <laughs> what? Think he shattered it on Twitter. Oh my god! <laughs> I think he meant stated it on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Um, like what, one letter can do to a whole phrase. <laughs> stated it, it on Twitter. Thanks, Matthew. <laughs> Please go to bigfinish.com and get not a well woman I, I yeah definitely katie we gotta when you come back on this show we gotta talk about that because i saw the ad for that i'm def definitely gonna get it it is absolutely a gem to hear matthew continues katie's not a well woman is just fantastic a massive highlight from big finish sue cook heard you two last before we went to commercial breaks and oh my god <laughs> and joe Mesa, thank you for joining us what celebrity you like to meet at tampa bay comic con oh that i guess that's for us joe we're, we're gonna hold back yeah, what's that? Whoever's there. Who's ever there, yeah, at this there. point. There, there's no Doctor Who representation, yeah. but yeah, there's no Doctor Who representation to us. So we'll we'll be there. But um I'll answer that question. I'll probably post it on Facebook out there. Yuli says, We'll look that up, Matthew. Okay. And oh, and she, she's talking to Matthew. Christian, I love catching your shows live. You guys are hilarious. Thank you so much. You uh, thank you so much for joining us. You guys mean a lot. I meant <laughs> <laughs> uh huh, Matthew. Matthew correct, correct and went to the word that you usually use. Yeah, I. <laughs> the funniest part is, I know, Matt. He's probably blushing head to toe right now. Do you? Uh, Thank you, Matthew, for making. You know, we were trying to hold Tim and Katie accountable, but now you put out something. Yeah. I, I guess we can. Yeah, we love that. Please, we we'd like the original <laughs> one. We'd like the original one better. I, I, no. <laughs> um, please also just want to make a quick reference. Uh, today we dropped out the episode for the audios for Richard Ashton. You got to check him out. He played the Ice Warrior in the Ice Warrior series. So definitely check out his episode. Um, you, uh, he, it just dropped out on uh, the Traveling Targets today. This is just a picture of Tim because I thought it was cool and hot. Is that a cigarette? Uh, yeah, it was you. It was you you burly man, you. It was in the middle of the lake. I was like, oh, God, I need to find. I mean, I've given up about about three and a half years ago now. So, And, no and, just, and just in case, let me throw out to our social media platforms. Check us out on HWWS Media um, on YouTube channel. You can subscribe here. You can also now watch us live, just like you're watching Katie and Tim. You can also go on Spreaker, CBSRadio.com, Podbean, also the NSCLiveTV.com, as well as our 
We're part of the iHeartRadio family of podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and definitely our biggest sponsor, KryptonRadio.com, which we always premiere every Saturday. Now, Tim, um, I don't know if I managed to say this because we talked earlier and then we had our technical issues, but Katie, I fell in love with this man with this CD right here, which everybody is watching. Um, the Rise of the New Humans and the Tyrants of Logic, which also features Nick Briggs and Rufus Hound, who plays a Time Lord in this episode as well. And you were talking about how dynamic his voice is. I literally could hear John see him when I was listening to this episode. And you two were just bouncing off each other pretty well. Melanie, that's cool. <laughs> so, um, He's I, that, that was the first time I heard Tim play the uh, play the third doctor. And li- th- this is a testament from me to you, Tim. I could see everything. I could see John. You really emulated. And the both of you, I could see what was going on in the relationship. You could tell you two hit it off very well. Oh, bless you. As I say, how Tim follows the arteries to find the half of John's performance mm-hmm. uh, as the doctor. And, you know, to a certain extent, John brought a certain amount of himself into it. But also you have to remember John actually was creating a character as well. So Tim has to find both levels. He has to find what's John and John's performance of the doctor, if that makes any sense to you. There's, yeah, yeah. you know, layer upon layer. But I was just going to ask Tim, because I always think this is interesting. Do you have an actor that really inspires you? Um, I, I, I've always been a fan of Richard Burton. Uh, as a well, you know, um, partly because, you know, the amount he could consume uh, in every sense. But um, I'm joking, obviously. But he, <laughs> uh, sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, yeah, I, I always sort of like that, sort of like that proper, you know, that sort of sort of unreconstructed male sort of uh, character, you know, um, sort of rough, not too rough, but, you know, just a man, man, man type thing. Uh, I guess I'm a bit old fashioned like that. Did you? The wild geese. <gasps> oh, one of my favorites. Great film. I love that film. Well, we just, we crossed the border. We were doing a play in Zimbabwe. Wow. And we border and we were welcomed because, you know, they, they, there was Jimmy Edwards, me, and, <laughs> and we crossed the border. And they put on big, we were in the middle of the jungle and there was um, Richard Harris. Richard Harris, Roger Moore, Hardy Kruger. <laughs> well, they had to keep. They had to keep um, uh, Richard Harris and um, uh, um, Burton apart, didn't they? They had to keep them in different villages to stop well, them just going crazy and just like booze. say again. They had to booze because yeah. they couldn't do all the running around and drinking in the heat. I know. Um, but on the very last, and, and but they all. All came together for a big dinner for us all to celebrate the mad actors that had crossed the border for the weekend. Yeah. Oh and wow. He, That's fantastic. And, and he was just he was everything you want. You know, isn't it lovely when you meet an actor everything? Yeah. So yeah, I absolutely do. Funny. It's <laughs> it's terrible. I'm probably a bit outdated now, sort of liking all that type of stuff, I guess. But I love all, all the Zulu. My favorite film, and then you know, where he goes there, yes. and uh, you know, sort of the Battle of Britain, and I don't know, the longest day, and Bridge Too Far, all that sort of stuff. I love all that. Sort Can of you stuff. do a Richard Burke? Can you do a Richard Burke? Richard Burke Broadsword, calling Broadsword calling Danny Boy. Broadsword calling Danny Boy. I look at, <laughs> I can't. Do it. That's right. Well, he's from near Port Talbot, you see. That's right. I can't afford to do it sometimes. Wonderful. But yeah, I did. I did play him on radio once. Yeah, with Sean Phillips. Me and Sean Phillips oh, did. Um... We were doing a, a few, week, a few yeah. weeks ago. I don't know. I've been in lockdown. Was she, uh, Pete Rotul, wasn't she? I, did, right. I didn't know that. Sorry, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, we were. Play, yeah, we did that. You saw it. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, She's yeah. fantastic, and I, Claudius. So you, you, you played him on. Well, he was. I was playing a guy called Mister Burton, who, who was a supermarket manager. And she was uh, someone who worked at the checkout, and he was more interested in the packaging and the and the commercialism and the capitalism. And she was like about more about you know about the, the, the interaction with other people, you know. And it was it was he was having a breakdown about we're not selling enough things, you know. And and she was all about oh it's all about um, 
talking to people and and the humanity where he was about you know he was the capitalist so it was a comic it was a comic thing but it was a long time ago i'm surprised i can remember it so you actually and you played burton through that how wonderful yeah it was great yeah yeah, yeah. you got the right when you did it just now you've got it like yeah. Or timber, oh. as timber. Say. That's right. Timber. Timber. Yeah, I, we say timbre. Yeah. Um, you have exactly the right timbre to your voice, as you do for John. You also actually have that. I'm just hearing that bit of Burton you did just then. You okay. know, exactly the right. It was spot on. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So now, instead of John, just play Richard Burton. I just play Richard Burton. That's right. Yeah, but I want to hear more when like, when we're back when we're back in the studio. I want to hear more about the wild geese. That's what I'm looking forward to okay, hearing well, about. All right. Let's tell me, Bowen. You play um, the third Doctor like Richard Burton, and I'm going to play Joe Grant like Betty Davis. That's a deal. Is that a deal? That's a deal. Big breaks, are you listening? Here we go. This is another <laughs> episode. <laughs> I want to listen. I'm, I'm, I, I, yeah. How much? Yeah. We'll get the uh, Kickstarter. Uh, uh, started on this one because definitely we got to get. Uh, we're going to wrap up the chats because unfortunately this is the last segment, but we do have to go. Go ahead, Katie. I did, I'm sorry. What'd you say? I was just going to say I'm all ready to do this right now. I'm I'm waiting. <laughs> to... I was now now look here, Joe. Look here, Joe. Good grief, Joe. Joe. You know, it's, you know, it's funny, Tim, this is your episode, but you know, it's funny. And I was just kicking the idea around. We're live. You two should just do a, a big finish episode as Joe and third, just live and just go completely nuts on that. Just, go, just the, the uncensored version of three. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, that would be, that would be, um, let me, let me go ahead and finalize the chats because we got to wrap up over here. Right. First of all, Matthew Rose says, I meant shared autocorrect. Yeah, no, we know what you meant, Matthew. <laughs> Totally know what you mean. Not only that, Matthew, I think we should have an episode of Big Finish, Nick, if you're listening to it, where autocorrect damages the universe. <laughs> somehow, and this, somehow autocorrect ruins uh, mankind completely, which is probably, I'm crying with laughter. Sorry, Katie, Tim, and all, no problem there. And the meddling monk play by Rufus Hound is fantastic. Yes, you got to check it out. Let me, um, let me bring up that picture over there. I, I don't know if I brought it up, but here it is. Uh, it is the third doctor. Um, the the tyrants of logic. I mean, it's it's a wonderful, and this is where I just fell in love with Jim uh, with Tim's voice. I'm changing Tim's name every five seconds. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Um, from now on, using the laptop for these things to avoid accidents of autocorrect. I thought Katie said Tinder. Okay. Anyway, uh, Sue Cook, that would be amazing. Yes, it yes it would be. Anything these two together do together is completely amazing out there. Uh, Jr. Our fourth Doctor in resident. Uh, another hoot of an episode. Katie and Tim are just hilarious together. Anyone who is, isn't watching this, the live episode is missing so much. M much love to you all. Um, Jr. Is our fourth Doctor guy. I mean, if you ever check him out, I'll, I'm going to bring pictures. Great up cosplayer. Now. Yes, and Jose's back. Uh, I will. I I will meet Kel Mitchell from Good Burger. He's talking Tampa about Tampa Bay Comic Con. Yeah, let me just really throw that in there. I mean, uh, unfortunately, um, I just heard that. Um, what is it? Uh, Paul Bet uh, Bet Bet Bettany. 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 He, he, Paul he's Bettany. out. Paul Bettany is out. Mar uh, Marina Sirtis is in. Tom Fenton is in. So again, nothing really Doctor Who about it, but us. But we're going to be making sure that Doctor Who gets a good representation out there at Tampa Bay Comic Con because we're going to be geeking out and such it there. Also, um, just to wrap up things, and again, uh, Tampa Bay Comic Con, for those of you who are out in the area, going to be July 10th through the 12th, Friday to Sunday. The Legend of the Traveling Tars is going to have at least one panel each day, so you want to definitely check us out out there. Plus, Katie, th this is going to be a surprise to everybody because um, I don't know if you're aware, the Traveling Tardis celebrated its eighth birthday. Melanie, you got them? You got them somewhere in there? Yep, we got to show them. You two definitely need to get a picture of little boy blue. He's been everywhere with a bunch of people. K Katie, that's the that's the picture I want to get you with when you get back to the states. Here, um, we had a goal to reach before his birthday, which took place May nineteenth. And before the episode came out, we hit that goal. So, if you want, take an idea of what our new goal is as far as Facebook is concerned. How many people you want to subscribe on our Facebook page? Take a wild guess. Yeah, come on, Katie. Just take a wild guess. Pick a number. I, I'm dreadful with numbers, darling. 
That's okay. I don't understand numbers. I don't know. <laughs> Tim, you want to take a shot? How many people were trying to get on our Facebook page? Say, uh, um, um, say 10,000. I'm, I'm going to say 9,500. Okay. 15,000. 15, 25,000. Okay. How about 35,000? We're up to 34,535. Yeah, right now, as we that's how that's our uh, Facebook page, and uh, that's uh, everybody who subscribes on the page. We want to thank every and each one of you. That's our goal for the end of the month. Please let everybody know what's going on out there. Um, fourth Doctor, the Fourth Doctor cosplay on Instagram. That's JR's page. Uh, Matthew, thanks all. Katie, adore you. And Tim, you have been fantastic. It's been a wonderful listening to Big Finish during this time. And thank you all so much for wonderful jobs. And this podcast has been my favorite so far. Thank you, Matthew. And we tend to do a heck of a lot more. Folks, we got to go out there. Tim and Katie, I'm going to give you the... Katie, you've been the host of the show for the most part. You're la you get to end this. How What's the last thing you want? Last word of this? I, I just want to say one thing that, you know, before, because we haven't mentioned how lovely it was to have John Kershaw, Kershaw coming in and bring the heart of the Brigadier, which I thought, and to have Rufus Hound, you know, and, and actors of that caliber being so unbelievably brilliant. But, you know, as I say, to have the Brigadier and the Doctor back in the studio, and then lovely Daisy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely wonderful and it was a very touching time for me to have those voices around me and um but it, it it's really extraordinary what big finish do what they bring and you know how much heart and love they put into everything that they do and nick briggs especially because he absolutely loves this era and he is such a joy and so naughty to work he is <laughs> <laughs> i don't need to say that because we tim and i have a great time but we are surrounded by fabulous um actors and of course working with toby you know in the studio we're, we're very lucky aren't we tim we are very lucky indeed it's such a privilege and a pleasure it to be really doing it is. really you is. know teamwork from top to bottom Absolutely. you know really is it's wonderful i just needed to say something very sensible then i'm exhausted mm -hmm. now <laughs> <laughs> We've had a, we've had a long day, definitely. I want to thank uh, Tim Trelor. Thank you so much for coming in, and Katie. With all the technical difficulties, this has been a magnificent episode, um, and it looks like a lot of people have enjoyed it. Katie, since you are the special co-host, please uh, please uh, go ahead and write us out. Tell everybody goodbye. Well, first of all, congratulations on that enormous figure, which I can't remember because I don't do numbers, but it's really big. Um, <laughs> Also, that how wonderful you guys are and patient you were to start with. And this is a terrific show, and I know you interview lots of people, and it's always a great joy to be a part of this show. So I think any actor who comes on your show is going to have a fabulous time. And thank you so much for inviting me to Tim, who I just adore hanging out with. Thank you so much. And, you know, Melanie and all of you, the patience you put in to... Disastrous 45 minutes spent getting this together. Great show, everybody. Keep oh. listening. <laughs> 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 of course, that's going to be. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you very Good much for that. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> as, you, as you finished, just so battery. Low <laughs> Tim, go eat your curry. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank Catch you very much. Time. Bye. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Oh I my think <laughs> right when she was like done, it just goes. Oh my god, Larry. Like, I, just, I just, I just listened to volume six. Oh god. Weeks. Yeah, and it was phenomenal. It really was. I'm trying. I'm trying to get this one. Let me. Um, it was that uh, one Poison right of the Daleks yeah. and Operation Hellfire. Oh, and okay. Cole, Cole, yeah, John Levine's in it as well. And with John Colshaw and all that, and with you know Tim's brilliant performance on all that, I was literally at work, and suddenly I had to stop for a moment and go, "That's that's not Nicholas Courtney." 
because it actually felt like he had captured the mm -hmm. essence of that character so well that it took me actually a minute to realize that, wait a minute, you know, that's not Nicholas Courtney. That's not John Pertwee. And there's this beautiful scene between the doc and the brigadier. You know how well they got along. And yeah. <laughs> it was just like a page of the past. It was just like stepping into the past again. It was so well done. And, and just what you... I would love to do with the show again is for us to, to kind of, as now we're just kind of, I mean, with COVID being what it is, um, we've been able to, you know, Christian, honestly, round of applause for him because he's been be able to like lock up one interview after the other, because there's a lot of actors out there that are just, you know, willing to, to jump on. Mm -hmm. But once we kind of get back to our new normal, I think one of the thing that, one of the things that I know as, as a show we'll start doing again is, is doing a lot more big finish reviews if not at least yes. for some, some of the third doctors, but especially when, you know, a lot of people are ready to hear the, the new adventure of um, the fourth doctor and the 10th doctor. So we'll definitely be starting to do big finish again. But right now, I mean, there's a lot of actors that are doctor who that are willing to come on. And I mean, bless Christian, you're just, you are kicking ass getting, getting a lot of great interviews in here. I think, I, and this is probably an industry thing that I, I was talking about behind the, behind the scenes there. Um, yeah. It will, during the lockdown, it's a little bit easier to get these folks because I'm not trying to down the situation, but they're not doing much of anything these days. So, and they want to get their names out and they want to get, oh, you least thank you so much. So, yep. We, we had a great time. I, I wish it, I, I, first of all, I want to apologize to everybody. I want to thank everybody who's still on here who would been watching the whole time. Um, we've been just having some technical issues and uh, we wanted Katie to be on because we thought this was going to be an awesome episode if not only Tim was being interviewed, but if Katie was doing the interview, because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you saw the previous one, um, Katie was being interviewed and Simon Fisher Becker was on the panel. So I was thinking this is kind of something, if we can do it with two guests on to have one guest who's been working interview the other, just to have some good times. And I said, you know what, if Katie's going to be on the interview, this mm -hmm. is going to be the most interesting interview. And I wish it technically, I wish it had been, that we could get everybody on, but we worked it out this way, and that that's just the way it happened. So, um, there, yeah, Matthew Rose. <laughs> Sorry for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, a word that I accidentally posted because I didn't read the whole thing, and now I'm looking at regrets. But hey, you know what? I, I the 13 year olds are growing up today. So yeah, it's but um yeah, we're gonna get back to big finish. We're gonna get back to topics. We're um. Uh, I've been talking to um, some things. One of the things we wanted to discuss as a topic is convention post COVID-19. Nisha's going to head that off because there've been a lot of changes at the conventions. I'm trying to interview and bring in, I was trying to, and I'm still in the middle of trying to get Tampa Bay Comic-Con to come on the show mm -hmm. because I want to have them. I know a lot of people are having misgivings. They're having doubts. I'm seeing all sorts of, you know, you you read everybody in the spectrum. I, some people are going like, "Hi, oh, you're you're dumb. You're why are you going back? You're going to get COVID." To people going, "Hey, we have to. When's the good date to get back to reality? When is that date? Is it August? Is it September? What's your facts? What is it based upon? Why why do we have to wait so long? Or can we just do this now?" And I think you know, Melanie and I are going to be at uh, TVCC, so I think it's got to be baby steps. But we are going to be following every procedure that Tampa Bay gives us. And we will be taking it even a step further. I, I, I know you're having a booth over there, but even the TARDIS, I literally got two big things of wipes for the TARDIS alone, just for that piece of metal. And that's it. And But we're going to take everybody seriously, and we're going to try to make sure that everybody is taken care of, not only us, but our audiences as they walk in and geek out with us. What, what, what's our deal? Do we have to wear masks? So... I, you know, we're, we're really taking this seriously because I think it's time that we have to go in and, and, and try to get back to the reality that we are. It's, yeah, I think it's been far too long. That's my opinion. And anybody can contradict it. That's fine. Everybody has their own opinions. Yeah, I, th that's fine. But you're going too. So <laughs> it's just like. Oh, I'm, I'm might be going. I have a table, but oh, I'm okay. still on a might. Okay. No. Florida keeps fine. having I... its numbers decide to spike back up. I'm not going. Yeah. I don't want it's, selling a painting and me getting a lung infection. No, thank you. Yeah. I, I, mm, it's, 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 it's everybody's call. At least it's a decision you can make. And if you decide to go, okay. 
we're going to be as safe as humanly possible. We're going to take every precaution to make sure everybody's safe if we're going to do it. Just like if you were going to walk into a restaurant or something of that nature. Yeah, like I've been telling people and all that. It's like, you know, you, you, you know, you may feel a little uncomfortable wearing a mask and all that. But when I do it, I know it's making somebody else feel a little better. Mm-hmm. A little more safer and all that, so that's the main reason I do it. Plus, I've had to get you know, I had to get used to it because that's the way we're handling it at work right now. We have to the second we walk in the building, the second we walk out, we're handed masks. We have to wear them and all that. And I'm just saying, look, you know, if if you know, do it for you know someone else's sake and all that. You know, if not for yourself, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, make somebody else feel a little better. But you know, do do you know, do everything you can to stay safe out there. If, even if you have to bring yourself a little thing of, you know, sanitizer in your pocket and all that every now and then, just hit yourself with a little bit of it on the hands. You know, it just takes that little bit of precaution. You know, because believe it or not, people, this this disease is killing people out there. It really mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just you know, it's a reality we have to deal with. Mm-hmm. No, and I will never be a person that says, ah, this is just, well, no, I'm going to go to Tampa Bay. I'm going to be wearing a mask. I'm going to have sanitizers up the, 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 the ooh, ah. And if anybody's working our booth or anything like that, uh, anybody who touches the tr- the TARDIS, that TARDIS will be wiped down every time. Anytime somebody shakes my hand or something, I don't even know if that's going to be a thing. But anytime I make physical contact, I will be following the rules of washing my hands, sanitizing my hands, making sure, you know, I will step in the procedures, but I will go if they let us if they're still on so i i will be willing to go but i'm going to take every precaution to make sure i believe i just saw um leaky con just officially postponed okay a big doctor who convention in orlando let me double check if let's see yep leaky con postponed its event until next year uh they did that yesterday i thought leaky con was um harry potter yes Okay. Yeah, it's what did I say? Doctor Doctor I'm sorry. Uh, it is Harry oh. Potter. I'm sorry. It's no, Harry no, Potter. I was like, wait a minute. We, I, in Orlando, um, it has been postponed until next year. No, that's right. I, I was going like, there's a Doctor Who convention, and yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 no, it's okay. I was like, I need to get on top of them. Go on there. I believe. Um, I, I, at last check, I think um, our own Mackenzie Floor and Sarah from Sarah So Geeky. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe they were both scheduled to be at LeakyCon. Okay. I. Think because I remember them, um, them talking about it. Um, so that it's postponed next year. So I wanted to make sure I bring that up. Since you know the Harry Potter um, can, um, fandom has a tendency of kind of cross pollinating with uh, our Doctor Who. Oh yeah, that's people. You know, the, for the many, Anglophiles. How many celebrity? How many talents have cross pollinated? Including oh God, right. Movie? It's the okay. How many people 30, have been 50? in Game of Thrones? And how many people have been in Doctor Who? And how many people have been yeah. in Harry Potter? And let's start the. <laughs> So that's a huge uh, roulette, not roulette, um, slot machine. Just well, the, 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 the running joke was if you've been in one, you have um, you have a job security for the entire year, mm-hmm. or at least job security for the decade, because you'll end up in Harry Potter, and then you'll end up a Doctor Who, and then you'll end up in Game of Thrones, or you know wh- wherever the track lays. So you'll start a Game of Thrones, end up in Harry Potter, and then Doctor Who, or something like that. I guess Sean Bean's the only one who doesn't want to follow that pattern. I want him on Doctor Who, so that's mm-hmm. just me. And he better not die. I'll be pissed. So, um, uh, what? Oh, there's still people here, guys. Thank you so much for joining. I'm, I'm glad you had a great time. That is. How many people are still watching this? We're not going to uh, do the same thing as what uh, did last time. Eight. No, I'm going to end the broadcast. I got stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, my I got yeah. stuff to do. But um, yeah, I just people love to hang around out here, and this is kind of like post uh con post uh panel post panel thingy. after. Yeah. After party. Guys, did you guys have a great time out there? I mean, well, you too, but anybody who wants to do uh, the live chat, um, uh, um, did you guys have a great time? I mean, I was just, I was at one point going like, Katie, um, I wish I wish the technical thing happened because Katie, I knew Katie was going to run the show. I was like, as soon as those two hit it off, I was like, you know what? I'll just sit here. <laughs> <laughs> that was just fun. That was just a roller coaster. Oh, absolutely. I, I think that's something... Um, I will say this. I'm I'm not going to spoil it, but I will say I'm working on two other people that are very close <laughs> to each other. JR is still watching. JR is always watching. I kind of love the man. Can't get rid of, <laughs> get rid of me that easily. <laughs> yeah, there's an in podcast button. I just got to bother to hit. But um, yeah. yeah I, oh, um, please bring Bailey if you come to TBCC. Yes. 
or in, or in the traveling tours as well. No. <laughs> No, my no. And once, and once again, you know, if you are feeling down about you know things that are going on right now, I can't recommend this enough. Follow Katie on Twitter. Yes, <laughs> she is literally a you know breath of fresh air, a ray of sunshine. I'm not kidding. There's just days when I go to work and I feel like total, you know, blah, and then I'll go to break and I'll sit there and I'll start reading Katie's tweets. And I immediately feel better. It, it, she's just, yes. her energy is just so contagious, mm -hmm. you know, well, I hate for lack of a better word. She's just such a, you know, breath of fresh air in this, you know, whole dark time we're in. It's, uh, the, oh, thanks, Grant. It, it, it's, I got to, I got to scoot now. You it's my turn to go. Okay. Yeah. Also, I think uh, long, I can. I have to run. Thank Sorry. You. One last Bye, everybody. Note. Bye. Bye. -bye. Uh, yeah. Also, I believe Tim's on Facebook. Really. You can leave Maria if you want to. Go okay. for it. It's fine. We're just we're just chatting away. This uh, this is just like after panel talk. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add in. I believe uh, Tim's on Facebook as well as I think he's on Twitter as well. Yeah, he hasn't accepted my friend. Friend requests. He'll get we around. Chatting, it. Just, we've been chatting on the PM, and just like, hey, you so much. yeah, he's not on it as often, like I said, as Katie is. But yeah, he'll eventually get around to it. He... Eventually, Matthew will think of us. Yeah, I think I think Tim and Katie were already drinking. You could see that they were already. <laughs> oh yeah, well, that was kind of uh, obvious. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. They're going like we don't, we don't, we want to censor ourselves. We don't. like no. <laughs> I want to record this for another half hour and I want to see the uncensored version because that's what everybody wants to see at this moment. You know, <laughs> we'll have the Doctor Who audio part and then we'll have the three hours of Katie and Tim talking about whatever the heck they want to. So, yeah, that's that's cool there. Um, yeah, we're going to be guys. We do this for you all the time. I just happen to be very lucky about these folks being very, very kind and very, very supportive of the show. And you've heard Katie. She's been on here. Uh, for twice, and I will say that I've talked with her. Um, I don't want to give myself too much of an ego boost, but uh, I, I had I interviewed Katie once, and she came onto the show, and I said, "You you can promote anything you want if you like anything." She goes, "Darling, I'm not on the show to promote anything. I am here because you asked me to." And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I sunk. I literally like you just you just want to come on to come on. Oh, tell me yes. And then when I talked to Tim about having Katie on uh, as a dual uh, as a dual companion, he he just like yes, we got to have this has got to happen. So I'm glad, even though the technical difficulties didn't work out in the favor of what we wanted, we got something that is so lovely. Katie's lovely on Twitter. Always surprised she takes the time to reply. Yeah, she will. That's the funny part. She will uh -huh. reply to you if she gets a chance. And I, this woman is my optic and she still does it she reads her tweets and, and does it so she's putting an extra effort into that that's heart that's love yeah the adventures of that. yeah the adventures of myopic manning as she calls it yeah myopic. yeah that's why i, I was <laughs> surprised when melanie gave me the the stink eye she's going like why'd you call her that she's, she's always calling herself <laughs> <laughs> this is not a shock this is nothing new it's like, heck, y'all, even she told us last time. I remember that time I almost took the wrong children home from school. Yeah, exactly. This is like not, <laughs> not only does she mention that she is this, she will go into detail why she is this. And just yeah. kind of like, well, that's just, that's Katie. And yeah. what makes up Katie, no matter what, you know, what 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 challenges anybody has, or she, she works through them. She's an amazing woman. And I love having her back on. I definitely mm -hmm. want her back on. Hosting the show, I will never. I don't even need to be here, guy. Katie, you're the host. Bye. <laughs> I was so glad I I got to meet her at Chicago Tardis this last year, and like I said, she is just as beautiful and energetic and all that in person. Yeah. Well, guys, yeah, we're gonna end the broadcast, but thank you for staying and sticking with us, and thank you for always being part. Please check out. There we go. Check out this guy on his YouTube channel, Doctor Freedom. Definitely subscribe. He's got some great. Ah. Music. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, mm. let's plug. <laughs> <laughs> let's plug the plugs. Mm. Uh, but I got to definitely get going, guys. If you want to continue the conversation, always PM me. I'll reach out to you as best I can. But um, please, thank you so much uh, for being a part of this. This, not, this is why I love doing this. I mean, episodes like this, talking to people who have made a big difference about the show that I grew up with and 
just geeking out. This is why I do this. And if you guys like it, we'll keep going. And let your friends know to subscribe to both of our channels on Facebook. Uh, Brian's on his Facebook page, his YouTube channel. Mine's on the Facebook and anywhere we get the social media platform, I heart. Uh, we love you guys. And we will talk later. And bye bye. bye.